AI will keep getting better. And the day will come when AI will do all of our, all the things that we can do. Not just some of them, but all of them. Videos and news about the future are everywhere, but we don't truly grasp what's happening or its scale. Let's try to understand what the co-founder and chief scientist of OpenAI, who suddenly left to create his own company for safe AI, is telling us. Let's try to think just for a moment about the consequences of his words. What on earth is going on? And the day will come when AI will do all of our, all the things that we can do. Not just some of them, but all of them. But what does that really mean? Let's imagine a scenario, a hypothetical world that has absolutely nothing in common with our own. Let's say there's less than 1% of the population who control 99% of the resources. In that world, there are 8 billion people, and they are necessary. They are the economy, the workforce. And as history shows, this 1% isn't exactly known for its high moral standards. Now, what if they are faced with a choice? Throughout history, they've used humans. But recently, they've started investing massive resources into a more convenient alternative, artificial humans. An artificial human can do everything a normal human can, but it doesn't eat, doesn't sleep, doesn't need days off, is easier to control, and is far easier to clone. So what choice will this highly moral elite make? Don't worry, they've already made their choice. I hope you understand this. When we have systems that can cook, code, and transport goods all by themselves, what use are we? But okay, it can't be that bad, right? Maybe this scientist has lost his mind. AI is dumb and can't do anything. We're still very, very far from all this. We have enough problems right now, right? And here is where Sutskever gives the most terrifying answer. He explains why this is inevitable. How do we know this, by the way? How can I be so sure? How can I be so sure of that? The reason is that all of us have a brain, and the brain is a biological computer. That's why. We have a brain, the brain is a biological computer. A good argument, but how soon, when? How close are we? To evaluate this, I propose a simple experiment. You see this image. There's an object, its shadow, another object, there's somewhere in space, somewhere on the image itself. I'm sure you are capable of, one, naming the objects, two, showing where they are. You can do this thanks to millions of years of evolution. In fact, we are just seeing a set of pixels that our brain interprets and we are good at it. But here is where things get truly creepy, if you think about it. Let me do the same thing with just an algorithm that just predicts the next word. I'll ask it to, one, name the object, two, show where it is. And we see this, some entity that knows all human languages and communicates perfectly in them in a fraction of a second, performed a very complex action that took us millions of years to learn. Look, it even understood that this object is a shadow and named them accordingly. It can even trace their outlines. And this was just Gemini 2.5 Flash, the middle brother of Google's language models. If you're still not amazed, you either didn't understand what just happened or you think it's perfectly normal for an entity to train from scratch in a few days on something that took us millions of years to learn. And this is just not the biggest language model. You can upload your own photos so you don't think this is a trick. So let's get back to the question. How soon will these convenient, capable artificial humans be created? We just saw a not so advanced version of that same artificial brain. So why can't a digital computer, a digital brain do the same things? 
This is the one sentence summary for why AI will be able to do all those things. Because we have a brain and the brain is a biological computer. And we saw that this digital brain, in one go, understood our request, recognized the objects, established relationships between them. And this digital brain learned it in a couple of days. It can be copied infinitely, and it's very cheap. To take 100 of these robots and have them process 100 images would cost you less than three cents at current prices. And here is where I have a question for you. When AI is now winning international math Olympiads, do you really think we're still far away? That they definitely won't catch up to us in a couple of years? Do you even know what thinking is? What makes you so special? If you are no longer valuable in this world, you will have no resources. Can you only count on the mercy of those who will control these artificial humans? By the way, I have to confess, we were talking about our world the whole time, not a hypothetical one. I lied to you. Finally, I want you to truly consider the words of an equally authoritative scientist, Jeffrey Hinton, known as the godfather of AI. Does humanity know what it's doing? No. You believe they can understand? Yes. You believe they are intelligent? Yes. You believe these systems have experiences of their own and can make decisions based on those experiences? In the same sense as people do, yes. <laughs>